Hi everybody, I'm tracking new impacts as we go throughout the rest of this week, including the chance for storms and what's brewing out in the Atlantic and why the Gulf is on alert off the southeast coast yet again this week. Hi everybody, I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Justice unpacking all of this for you so that you can know how to stay prepared this week, including that new severe weather risk issued for tomorrow. And we're looking closer at what's happening deeper out into the Atlantic. A couple of waves are now moving in that need to be watch closely for possible development. If you're new to this channel, please like this video, comment in the comment section where you're watching from and subscribe now. That's the best way to stay informed for all things coming our way because certainly no rest for the meteorologists in the southeast right now because there's a lot of an active pattern going on right now that needs to be watched, including that chance for storms as we go throughout the day tomorrow. This was just issued by the Storm Prediction Center and we need to stay dialed in on it because as we go throughout the day tomorrow, there's going to be some more humidity that's being built up across the area and needs to be watched. You see a level two medium risk for severe weather up toward the plains, but uh, locally in the southeast, South Carolina, low country up through Georgia, Atlanta, southbound, even getting very close to the upstate of South Carolina will have a chance for uh, severe weather tomorrow. And as we move forward, that's going to be one of the higher risks for storms that we're going to have this week as we see the greatest moisture sliding toward Florida this week. Let me show you what I'm watching here as I refresh this model data, give us a fresh look at what's going on. Uh, so storms, yeah, they were plentiful today and tomorrow as we go throughout the day, we're going to see them fire up yet again. Three, four, five o'clock. Not everybody's going to see a storm, but if you do get one, it's going to be quite heavy and strong. Uh, now, the greatest heat is beginning to push toward the west as well. So the Carolinas and Georgia, Florida, it's still going to be hot this week, but it uh, looks like the bulk of the heaviest, strongest heat is being pushed off toward the west, and we'll get a little bit of a break. So 6, 7, 8 o'clock, there's some storms, and there are some signs that deeper into the evening tomorrow, there could be some stormy uh, weather across uh, the Carolinas, Georgia, Florida, as this moisture slides to the, the coast. So 9, 10, 11 o'clock through midnight, there's still good, could be some rain and some thunder happening around the southeast. And it may take a little while for that kick on out of here, maybe even 5, 6 a.m. on Wednesday. Now, Wednesday looks like we're waking up to a few downpours, but the bulk of this moisture is pushing toward the south, a backdoor front moving in. So that backdoor front may spark early downpours on Wednesday, but it looks like a dose of at least not as bad humidity works in as we go throughout Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening uh, across the Carolinas. But look what's happening toward Florida. It is just cooking here as the deepest moisture moves overhead and we get a chance for uh, some more tropical moisture moving in. The NAM model, the new NAM model's out, which has been interesting to watch. Let me shift to the last full run that we have of this. Watch this moisture move in tomorrow. It's going to be stormy at times in the afternoon, three, four, five o'clock. We'll see those storms rolling through. Let me cue that back up right here. And then look at this moisture off southeast coast. It's trying to just form into something more organized, but never really does. And then it gets into the Gulf, and that's when we need to stay dialed in on what's happening there. Notice the Weather Prediction Center. You've got day one, which would get us through tomorrow, and there's those storms that could be on the strong side across the low country of South Carolina up through Myrtle Beach, and there could be some really heavy rain in this. But by day three, notice there's a low pressure over the Gulf, very similar to last week in the fact that we may see this try to organize into a lower pressure for the Gulf Coast. And if that does, it may obtain some tropical characteristics. Not as high of a flood threat this week along Florida and the Gulf, but as we go throughout our Wednesday, Tuesday night into Wednesday, there could be some flooding in and around the low country. Slow moving thunderstorms as this backdoor cold front begins to take shape. Now day three, that's centered over Florida as we get repeated rain. This would be Wednesday going into Thursday and Thursday going into Friday. That shifts just like last week toward Louisiana, southern Alabama, southern Mississippi. And then by Friday into Friday night, that's centered over central Louisiana. And it's all because the slug of moisture begins to move over. You can trace this here by the moisture in the atmosphere. See that red right there? That shows that the moisture is really plentiful. Now, notice how it pushes to the south with this backdoor cold front. Notice that backdoor cold front 
pushing through Wednesday morning. That could spark some thunderstorms across the upstate of South Carolina early in the day. Don't be surprised if you wake up Wednesday and there are storms, but the rest of the day is looking quite nice. In fact, the the precipitable water, the humidity in the atmosphere really drops quite a bit going into Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday night. We'll take it, and I mean drops for the Carolinas. It really picks up across Florida. Look at all this available moisture Wednesday night, Thursday, as a slug moves over parts of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and then it starts to move toward the north again. And it looks like that humidity, that higher plume of moisture does move back toward the western Carolinas as we go deeper into our forecast time frame, which would be uh, going into Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Now, we do need to style, stay dialed in on what's happening in the tropics. And as I switch over here, I want to show you what's happening in the Atlantic Basin as a whole first. Look at all the juice across the southeast. It is a moisture-ridden atmosphere, and when you have that, there is the potential that you leave moisture in a vulnerable area. It could become uh, something to, to watch, and we'll need to watch this closely off the southeast coast into the Gulf. But there's also a couple of waves, two waves, in fact. This wave right here is really struggling, folks. In fact, we've been watching that closely for a few days now, and it's not really showing much in the way of signs of trying to develop into much. The National uh, Hurricane Center watching this, giving it all but a 10% chance of becoming something now. Uh, as we look at our models that have run on this, none of them have really jumped out at being too significant or, or of much of a concern. So we don't have much in the way of tracks that are showing it developing into much. The GFS plumes here show whatever this is moving over the Lesser Antilles with some heavy rain. Sure, it's going to be stormy and rainy at times. Uh, going to the Caribbean Islands, going into our Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday time frame. But it doesn't look like it's going to have much of a chance to, to develop into much because uh, honestly, it, it's running out of time and it's running into a more hostile environment. So the models just aren't too aggressive with this system. You have a few here that want to grab it up into a tropical storm. None of them show a hurricane, but most of the models here kind of killed this thing off in 24 to 48 hours with just a plume of moisture moving into the Caribbean. The ship's model is a steady increase here. So, uh, you know, it, it's worth watching. But when you look closer to home, you got all this moisture here. There's no invest. There's no defined area of low pressure. Just a lot of moisture hanging tight off the southeast coast, which is, is never really a good thing. When you look at the satellite imagery on our, our wave moving toward the Caribbean islands, it's all but fizzled out. It's moving into drier air, and as we expected, it's a very hostile environment there. So moving forward here, what are the models showing? Got an area of lower pressure moving in the Caribbean, and you see the lower pressure over Florida. This would go into Wednesday's time frame. You know, chance for some development here on the European off the Gulf, but nothing really defined. And going deeper into the forecast here, this goes through the 26th, 27th time frame, not much cooking close to home. And by close to home, I mean, you know, from the Lesser Antilles to the United States. Central America looking rainy at times, but we're not looking anything defined. Uh, European ensembles, uh, you look at the lowest pressure here, there's a couple of waves. In fact, this one off the coast of Africa will need to be watched as it moves toward the Lesser Antilles. That could get a designation from the Storm Prediction or Weather National Hurricane Center. But right now, it doesn't look to be uh, anything that uh, would be significant. As we map out the GFS, what is it showing? It, too, has a lower pressure wave. Here it is, 10, 12, moving toward the Lesser Antilles. Same time frame, 26, 27. So again, we got to stay dialed in on it. Icon model, let's just run the German model out. What's it showing off the uh, southeast coast? It was good at sniffing out last week's threat early on. It's got that slug of moisture moving in, and does it curl up? Not really. This gets us to Thursday. You got this tropical moisture moving into the Caribbean. You got another wave here. Do any of those form or curl up into a lower pressure? It's got a little lower pressure here across central Louisiana, but similar to last week, so weak that it probably doesn't develop anything organized. But you got some slugs of moisture that are moving on through. And because of that, if you look at the European model, this is all 51 models averaged out and then extending out into time. Where could we have tropical development? It shows a 10, 20% chance off the southeast coast, and then it crosses over Florida, rainy on Wednesday especially. And then it's got more like a 10, 20% chance, very similar to last week. Odds, there's a chance, but not a great one, that it forms into Dexter. 
but you've also got a couple of waves down here. Notice how our wave that's that's currently highlighted by the National Hurricane Center pretty much fizzles out as it enters the Gulf, or the Caribbean, I should say. And then as it moves deeper in, there's some chances of some other spin-ups in here. But deeper out, there's that wave that's now off the coast of Africa. Once it splashes down, European model shows, okay, uh, you know, 30, 40, 50% chance growing with time. So there are signs that as we go deeper into the last half of July, that some of these waves off the coast of Africa would at least have a better chance at spinning something up and giving us something uh, track trackable. Uh, as far as the southeast is concerned, as we move into the next 8 to 14 days, this will get us to the end of July. Looks like it's going to be hot, hotter than normal. <laughs> no surprise there. It's supposed to be normal. It's supposed to be hot this time of the year, but this is above normal uh, temperatures. So Florida, South Georgia, uh, near normal as you get up here toward North Carolina, but simply put, it's going to be hot and, and slightly above normal, which would be mid to upper 90s for many. Uh, as we go to that first week to two weeks of August, Again, a normally one of the hottest times of the year, it's showing above normal temperatures. So if normal is hot at 92 degrees, above normal would be 95 to 100 degrees. So simply put, it looks like the heat and the ridge is going to start to play out, which means we can't rule out rain. I mean, of course, it's going to be stormy each afternoon and evening, but as far as widespread above normal soaking rain that looks to kind of simmer down and that threat would be lower going into our time frame of uh, late July into early August. So we'll be watching the patterns closely but it looks like we're going to start looking deeper out into the Atlantic once we get through with this little gulf recycle thing. Folks if you appreciate this level of detail here this early outlook as to what's going on and you're new to this channel please consider liking the video comment in the comment section where you're watching from. I love looking to see what town you're in and subscribe to the channel as I will keep you up to date with all things tropical all things severe weather. Simply put going to be hot humid with storms tomorrow but deeper into the forecast here we we could have some action to watch uh, in the tropics with first close to home, the Gulf this week, and then deeper out to the Atlantic as we get into uh, next week into the end of July. I'll keep you posted, folks.